Close your eyes for a moment. I want you to imagine the most beautiful place you have ever seen. Maybe it's a white sand beach in the Maldives. Maybe it's the peak of Mount Everest, or maybe it's just your childhood home thousands of miles away. Now open your eyes. You are still here, staring at a screen. The distance between here and there has always been humanity's greatest enemy. For thousands of years, we have fought this enemy with horses, with ships, with steam trains, and with supersonic jets. We have shrunk the world, but we haven't conquered space itself. We still have to travel through the distance. But what if we didn't? What if the concept of travel became obsolete? What if you could step into a booth in New York at 8 a.m. and step out in London at 8.01 a.m., fresh and ready for a meeting? No jet lag. No TSA security theater. No crying babies in seat 14. B. Teleportation. It is the ultimate dream of science fiction. It is the magic of Star Trek. The convenience of Harry Potter. The tech of the fly. It promises a utopia where geography is dead and the world is one giant neighborhood. But there is a dark side to this dream. A side that physicists and philosophers whisper about but rarely shows up in the brochures. If teleportation were actually possible today, it wouldn't just change how we travel. It would fundamentally change what it means to be human. It might destroy the economy, erase national borders, and most terrifically of all, it might demand a sacrifice that you don't even realize you're making. In this deep dive, we are going to dismantle the reality of teleportation. We will look at the impossible physics, the nightmare of the suicide machine, the legal chaos of cloning, and the ultimate question. If you beam yourself to Mars, does your soul go with you? To understand the stakes, we have to understand the mechanism. How do we actually get you from point A to point B without crossing the space in between? In theoretical physics, there are essentially two pathways to teleportation. One involves bending the universe, the other involves breaking you. The first method is the wormhole approach. Imagine you want to get from one side of a sheet of paper to the other. An ant has to walk all the way across. But if you fold the paper, the two points touch. You punch a hole and step through. This is an Einstein-Rosen bridge. It connects two points in space-time. If we could stabilize a wormhole, teleportation would be as simple as walking through a doorway. You remain intact. Your atoms aren't scrambled. It is safe. The problem energy. To keep a wormhole open large enough for a human to walk through, you would likely need negative mass or energy equivalent to a star. It's a nice idea, but for now, it remains firmly in the realm of fantasy. That leaves us with the second method. The realistic method. The method we have actually tested in labs, quantum teleportation. We have already done this. In 1997, scientists successfully teleported a photon. Later, they teleported atoms like calcium and beryllium. In 2017, Chinese scientists teleported a photon from the ground to a satellite in orbit. But here's the catch. They didn't physically move the photon. They moved its information. This is based on quantum entanglement. When two particles are entangled, they share a mysterious connection. If you measure the state of one, you instantly know the state of the other, even if they are galaxies apart. By using this link, we can transfer the quantum state of one particle to another. Essentially, the particle at the destination becomes the particle from the source. It adopts its identity perfectly. So to teleport a human, we just scale this up, right? Scaling this up is not like upgrading your hard drive. It is a computational impossibility with our current tech. The human body is a chaotic masterpiece of biology. You are made of roughly seven octillion atoms. That's a seven followed by 27 zeros. To teleport you, the machine needs to know the precise position, momentum, and spin of every single one of those atoms at the exact same moment. If you miss a few atoms, you might arrive without a finger. If you mess up the neural connections in your brain by a fraction of a millimeter, you might arrive with severe brain damage or as a completely different person. The data required to describe a human being is estimated to be around 2.6 times 10 to the power of 42 bits. Let's put that in perspective. If you stack the highest capacity hard drives available today on top of each other, the stack would reach past the sun, past the center of the galaxy, and out into the void. And then you have to transmit that data. 
With our current fastest fiber optics, downloading you at the destination would take longer than the current age of the universe. But this is a what-if scenario. So let's assume we solve Moore's law. Let's assume we have quantum computers and infinite bandwidth. The machine works. You pay your fee, you stand on the pad, and the operator says, energizing. This brings us to the most terrifying thought experiment in history. Let's play this out. Meet Bob. Bob is a family man. He has a wife, two kids, and a job in London, but he lives in Sydney. Every morning, Bob steps into the teleportation station. The process is called dematerialization, rematerialization. Here's what happens step by step. Step one, the scanner. The machine scans Bob, but according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics, you cannot measure a particle perfectly without disturbing it. To get the data, the scan must be invasive. In fact, to get a perfect read of every atom, the machine likely has to take the atoms apart. So, as the scan happens, Bob is vaporized. He is disassembled into raw energy. He ceases to exist in Sydney. Step 2. The Transmission Bob is now a stream of binary code, a signal beaming via satellite to London. Step 3. The Reconstruction The machine in London receives the blueprint. It has a tank of raw carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, generic organic soup. It uses Bob's blueprint to arrange these raw atoms into a perfect configuration. A man steps out of the machine in London. He looks like Bob. He sounds like Bob. He has a scar on his knee where Bob fell off his bike when he was seven. He remembers kissing his wife goodbye in Sydney three seconds ago. To his wife and to his boss, this is Bob. But is it? Consider the no-delete scenario. Imagine the machine in Sydney malfunctions. It scans Bob and sends the signal to London, but the vaporizer breaks. It fails to kill the original Bob. Now, Bob hash one steps out of the machine in Sydney, confused. Did it work? He asks. Suddenly on the screen, he sees Bob hash two walking out of the machine in London. Bob hash two feels fine. He's heading to work. Bob hash one is standing in Sydney, terrified. He realizes that he was never going to travel. He was going to be destroyed. The man in London is an imposter, a copy, a clone who stole his life. Now, the operator looks at Bob Hash One and says, I'm sorry, sir, company policy, but we can't have two of you roaming around. It creates legal issues. He pulls out a gun. In a functioning teleporter, that gun is automatic. The machine kills you every single time. You step in, you die. A stranger with your face walks out the other side. So, the philosophical question is, is consciousness continuous or are we just the sum of our memories? If you die and a perfect copy wakes up with your memories, did you actually survive? Or is the history of teleportation just a history of mass murder that no one noticed? If the public accepts this risk or ignores it for convenience, the legal world would collapse into chaos. Let's go back to the scenario where the machine fails to kill the original. We now have two Bobs. Who owns Bob's house? Who is married to Bob's wife? If Bob Hash 2 commits a crime in London, can you arrest Bob Hash 1 in Sydney? They share the same DNA, the same fingerprints, the same memories up until the split. We would need an entirely new branch of law, identity rights. Governments might mandate that the original has no special rights over the copy or vice versa. Or strict laws would require the immediate termination of the redundant version, which brings us back to state-sanctioned execution. And then there's religion. Every major religion involves the concept of a soul, a non-material essence of a person. If you disassemble a body atom by atom, does the soul stay attached to the atoms? Does it ride the fiber optic cable? Or does the soul depart the moment the body is vaporized in Sydney? Would the copy in London be a soulless being, a philosophical zombie, someone who acts like a human but has no inner light? You could see religious groups branding teleportation as an abomination, banning their followers from using it. We might see a society divided. The originals, who only travel by plane and train to preserve their souls, and the transient, who beam around the world, viewed by the others as hollow shells. Let's move away from philosophy to cold, hard cash. If we ignore the soul-crushing implications, the economic impact is mind-boggling. The transportation industry is worth trillions. 
Airlines, shipping containers, oil tankers, cars, roads, bridges. Gone. All of it. If I can beam a manufactured product from a factory in China directly into your living room in America, the entire logistics supply chain vanishes. The value of oil plummets. Geopolitics shifts instantly. Countries whose economy relies on oil exports would collapse, leading to massive global instability. Real estate would undergo a great equalization. Right now you pay a premium to live in New York, London, or Tokyo because that's where the jobs and culture are. But if you can live in a cabin in the Amazon rainforest or a cheap house in rural Siberia and still commute to Wall Street in one second, why would anyone pay $3,000 a month for a tiny apartment? Cities would de-densify. The world would become decentralized. We could return nature to the cities, turning highways into parks. But there is a darker side to this economy. Waste disposal. Why manage landfills when you can just teleport your garbage directly into the sun? It sounds great until we realize we are changing the mass of the sun or polluting space. And what about crime? A bank vault is useless if a robber can teleport inside. A prison wall is useless if an inmate can be beamed out. National borders become imaginary lines. How do you stop illegal immigration, drug smuggling, or human trafficking when anyone can bypass customs instantly? To counter this, governments would have to implement total surveillance. To ensure you don't teleport a bomb into the president's office, every telepod would need to be government controlled. Your biological data would be tracked every second. Freedom of movement becomes absolute, but privacy becomes extinct. Finally, let's look up. The ultimate potential of teleportation isn't about commuting to work. It's about the survival of our species. Right now, going to Mars takes seven months of dangerous space travel. Going to the nearest star Proxima Centauri would take thousands of years with current technology. We are trapped in our solar system by the sheer vastness of space. But with teleportation, we only need to send one ship. One slow probe carrying a receiver station to Mars, or Europa, or an exoplanet. It might take 10 years or 100 years to get there, but once it lands and turns on, boom. We can beam scientists, engineers, and colonists there instantly. If something goes wrong, they can beam back. We could colonize the galaxy not by sailing ships across the void, but by networking the stars. We could become a Type II civilization, harvesting energy and resources from across the universe. But remember the speed of light. Even with teleportation, you are sending data. Data cannot travel faster than light. So teleporting to Mars would still take about three to 20 minutes depending on the orbit. Teleporting to the nearest star would take four years for the signal to arrive. It's not instant magic, but it is a lot faster than a rocket. So here's the choice. We have a technology that could save the planet from pollution. It could end traffic, collapse the cost of living, and open the door to the stars. It is the ultimate tool of freedom, but the price of admission is the specific uncertain nature of your own existence. Would you be willing to step into that booth? Would you trust that the person waking up on the other side is actually you? Or would you look at the teleporter and see it for what it might really be, a fax machine for human beings that shreds the original document? Perhaps some distances are meant to be traveled, not skipped. Perhaps the journey is the point. But if you were late for the most important meeting of your life, or if you missed a loved one who was thousands of miles away, would you risk it? Let me know in the comments. Would you use the teleporter, or are you staying on the ground? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you, or a copy of you, in the next one.